So, my name is Gina, and I am a research associate at the Center for the Study of Global Christianity, which is in Boston, Massachusetts. And our center is a <coughs> research center that focuses on religious demography. We're going to talk about what religious demography is, and how we get our numbers, and a little bit of methodology, and talk about world Christianity, ancient Christianity, and ecumenism. So hold on tight, we're going to pack a lot of stuff into this single session here. Um, you have uh, a handout here that everyone should have, um, and this is, well, I'll start here, I'll go through this way. So, how many people have seen the Atlas of Global Christianity? How many people recognize that artwork on the front cover? <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> so the, this is our 2009 text that was uh, published by Edinburgh University Text. This is the first scholarly atlas to document the demographic shift of Christianity to the global south. And so this book is an oversized text full of hundreds of full-size maps and full-color graphs and charts and just pages and pages of data uh, that document Christianity around the world between 1910 and 2010. And it also includes essays on every region of the world uh, by scholars from every region of the world. There's an essay on you know, Western European Christianity written by Western European. So it's very unique in that sense. So this came out in 2009. A lot of the data that I'll be talking about today comes from this text, because this text includes a presentation assistant where you can download all of the pictures. So you can use a bigger paper, set a presentation, it looks nice. An update to the Atlas Book Christianity came out just this year, in June 2013. This was a report that the Center for the Study of Global Christianity put out that I was a researcher on Christianity in its global context, 1970 to 2020, Society, Religion, and Mission. And this text, I have a copy of one hard copy of it here. Um, it's a 92 page report. This is available free online. Yes, I can. Yes. Um, so this is a 92-page report that is available free online, and in case you missed it, it's available free online for you to download, and there is a link in that handout that you have. So the handout you have is um, a summary of this text, and some of the key findings from this text. Uh, so feel free to go online and um, take advantage of that resource. The dates for that text are 1970 to 2020. So in this presentation, you'll see some dates uh, 1910 to 2010, and some dates 1970 to 2020. So making future projections to 2020. So just so you know, I think these are the dates that we're talking about here. So international religious demography. Who's ever heard of this? A, few, a couple people. People that see you know what I do. Or people in Boston. So international religious demography is my field. And so we're going to go through a little bit of what this means. Demography is a statistical study of human population characteristics. This is a well-accepted scholarly field. And so this includes things like size of populations, fertility rates, mortality, migration, etc. So studying a human population in relation to these characteristics. One level underneath that, going down further, is what's called social demography. And so that's a broader array of human characteristics related to populations, such as health, and economics, and language, and religion, which is what I am most interested in. And so putting these things together, you get religious demography. And, and I have a really long definition of religious demography here, because we just published the first ever textbook on what is religious demography. So that means we have a nice, long, complicated definition for what it is, because it's a textbook. But I'll read it out to you. Religious demography is the scientific and statistical study of the demographic characteristics of religious populations, primarily with respect to their size, age set structure, density, growth, distribution, development, migration, and vital statistics, including the change of religious identity within human populations and how these characteristics relate to other social and economic indicators. Okay, that's a little bit of jargon. What it means is I track people and what their religious affiliation is. That's pretty much it. So, we, one, thing, one important thing to realize is that we track affiliation 
not beliefs or practices. So we're not as concerned with what people necessarily believe or do, we're concerned about where they are affiliated. Uh, we are a social science research center in that regard, so we're concerned with affiliation. So just keep that in mind as you're listening to the data. So how do we do this? A little bit of methodology. I happen to love methodology, so I just had to put this in there. The three primary sources of demographic data are censuses, surveys and polls, and data from religious communities themselves. So we're going to go through each of these quickly so you can just see where the numbers come from. So about half of the world's countries ask a religion question on their census. Uh, censuses are generally taken every 10 years, um, and they are they enumerate the entire population. And so about half of the world's countries ask a, a, a religion question. So here we have three examples from Ireland, Scotland, and Britain. So it's pretty typical. What is your religion? Check one box only, and they give you some choices. And if you aren't any of those, you can write in what what you are. And so you see a similar thing for Scotland um, with a different group of, of, of religions, and then the same thing for Britain. Um, this is the most important source. This is the source that we go to first, because it's enumerating the entire population. Now, we know there are problems with certain censuses. So if you're thinking to yourself, I live in India, and it doesn't count Christians currently in the census in India. We know that. Um, so we take that into consideration. The next, oh, also with censuses, a lot of censuses that do not ask a religion question ask a question about ethnicity. And so we can often make connections between religion and ethnicity. For example, 99.9% of Somalia is, is, is Muslim. So if there are Somalis, say in Norway, then we, say there's 100 Somalis in Norway, the odds of them being Muslim is pretty high. Um, so we can make connections like that in terms of ethnicity. Now that's not the case for every country. So we know that a lot of Christians have been leaving uh, Syria, for example, but Syria is majority Muslim. Um, so you cannot assume that Syria and all of the world are all Muslim, because you know there have been a lot of Christians leaving Syria. So this is not a perfect uh, example, or it's not a perfect method, but it's helpful. And so you have, this is the United States Census from 2010, which um, I think is a really complicated question. And then you have, here's an example from New Zealand, obviously asking about very different ethnicities in both of those contexts. <laughs> So the next source for demographic data is surveys and polls. And so surveys and polls are generally smaller scale uh, sample sizes, maybe polling 2,000 or maybe upwards of 7,000 people. And they tend to ask questions like this. So here's an example from the 1999 Bulgaria European Value Survey. That's a survey that's very popular that asks a religious question. And so it asks, do you have a religious affiliation? Yes or no? If the answer is yes which one, and then you can write it in. And so there are lots of surveys in lots of countries that ask data like this. They are not, in some cases, not as reliable as censuses because it's not rep totally representative of the population, but they strive to be. And then my center is unique in that we actually go to the religious communities themselves and ask them how many of them are there. We go to the BCUSA Research Services arm and say, how many congregations do you have and how many people are in them? Uh, we, we go to religious communities and we read their books. Um, some examples here, the American Jewish Yearbook, right, because we do religious demography, not just Christian demography. So we're doing every religion in every country of the world, from Afghanistan to Zimbabwe. Um, so the Jewish communities put out a lot of, of texts. The Mormons recently came out with a whole atlas on Mormonism. The Roman Catholic Church has extensive statistics on almost anything concerned with religious life. We buy these little red books every year because they're like gold to us. Uh, so we take into consideration what people say about themselves. And then we take all the data together and we reconcile it. So we say the census says one thing, but the community says another. What's actually going on? So that this is where, where the data comes from. And as we go into global Christianity and seeing how global Christianity has changed, I just wanted to throw this slide in so you know how we talk about the way religion changes. And there's three, uh, three ways religion changes, and it makes this formula. So you, you, religious adherence changes by being born into it or dying, births and deaths, converts into the religion and converts out of the religion, and immigration and emigration. So these are the three 
categories for how religious adherence changes. And if, as we see the changes in Christianity over the, over the past hundred years, um, we see elements of this, of each of these, in, in, each, in each country. So the, the, the context that we're talking about is the 20th century. And this is a really tough context to talk about in terms of religion. Because the 20th century was, in many ways, one of the most tumultuous times for religion in the world. We had war and genocide and social upheaval and political upheaval, and all of these things greatly affected religion in the world. So as, as you look at the statistics and as you look at them together, I just want you to keep in mind that what you know of world history in the 20th century and how all these various things affected, affected uh, religion. So, so all the way back to 1910, in 1910, nearly 100% of the world was religious. Uh, there were very few people who self-identified as atheist or agnostic. By 1970, this had changed drastically. So that by 1970, 80% of the world was religious, which meant 20% of the world was atheist or agnostic. And we know that this is, and speaking of that 20th century context, the rise of communism, um, state imposed atheism, all these things took its toll on religion around the world. By 2020, we anticipate that 90% of the world would be religious. So we often get asked the question, is there a global resurgence of religion? The answer is yes and no. Looking from 1910 to 2010, uh, didn't go. Uh, looking at 1910 to 20, 2010 is like 88% religious. Um, looking at 1910 to 2010, you see that the world is less religious, but looking at 1970 to 2010, the world is becoming more religious. So it depends on which, which data set you're looking at. And in the midst of all this change, this is what's happening in global Christianity. This is my job. This is what I do every day. I try to have a flat line. 